here's where we're going to start today. Okay, here's where we're going to start. The square root of x equals 6. This seems like a no-brainer, right? A lot of you can already know what the answer is before we start. Because what, what the qu question is saying is, what do you take the square root of and you get an answer of 6? We can all figure that out in our head, right? Okay? But we're going to use this example right here to talk about how we're going to do all the rest of them so we don't have to try to be guessing the whole time. All right? How do we undo a square root? We square it, right? Now, what am I squaring? So like this whole side I square? I square root both sides, don't I? If I don't square root both sides, I've changed the value of the problem and that is not okay, is it? Okay? So if I square something that's being square rooted, what do I end up with? In this case, just x, but in general, what do I end up with? what's inside the square root. That's exactly right. Does that make sense? So in this case, I get x. Tomorrow when we work with rational exponents, I'm going to show you another way, way this makes sense. Because right now it's just like, oh, okay, the root sign goes away. Mm, not really, but we're not ready to have that conversation quite yet. Okay, we will have it tomorrow though. All right? So on the left-hand side, I get x. What do I have on the right-hand side? 36, is that the right answer? How could we know for sure? Okay, plug it in. What is the square root of 36? Oh, I got it right. That's the answer. You okay with that? Okay, let's try another one. The square root of 2x plus 5 equals 9. The square root of 2x plus 5 equals 9. How do we undo a square root? Square it. I'm squaring this whole side right here, right? And this whole side right here, right? Okay. What do I have left on the left-hand side? 2x plus 5. Remember, it's not just the root signs going away, but we're going to talk about that tomorrow. And we're not just getting x like we did up here. We're doing like she said, and we're getting everything that's underneath the root sign. That's what I end up with right here. You okay with that? What do I have on this side? 81. Can you solve this problem? Boy, I sure hope so. You've been doing it since seventh grade, right? Okay, so what's the first step? Subtract 5, subtract 5. So 2x equals 76. x equals 38. It's a good guess. It's okay. Is it right? Could we be sure? Plug it in. 2 times 38. 76 plus 5. 81. What's the square root of 81? Is this the right answer? Yes. You okay so far? Okay. What about this problem? So this, has, this problem has something you haven't seen before yet today, doesn't it? What do you think you have to do first? Okay, so let's talk about that first answer. Somebody said distribute. What would we distribute? Are we allowed to take this 3 and put it inside the root sign? No. So this problem has a multiplier of 3 in the front, doesn't it? That's not something we've experienced on any of these other two examples. And that leads us to what we actually have to do very, very, very first when we're solving these questions. And what we have to do very, very, very first is isolate the radical. Okay? Is this radical isolated? No. It has this multiplier of 3 out in the front. How do I get rid of that 3? So I don't just erase it? Oh, okay, good. Okay? So if I divide both sides by 3, I need to... We're going to work together, like I told you since the beginning of the year, on our vocabulary. Okay? I've heard you guys say something for the last couple weeks, and it's finally gotten on my nerves enough that I want to fix it. Okay? 
what you're saying is not wrong, it's just not all the way right. What you're saying is fine for Algebra 1 and lower Algebra 2, we got to fix it. Fair? Okay. What happens with these threes? They cancel. That's what you guys say, right? They cancel. Well, that doesn't mean anything because what you, when I said, what do you get when you subtract 5 here, you said that cancels. Is the same thing happening in both of those two? Then let's fix our vocabulary to make it clear. Okay? What happens right here? It simplifies to zero. What happens right here? It simplifies to one. Okay? I don't mind you saying cancel if I'm sure that you know what you mean. I'm not really quite sure of that yet. Okay? This simplifies to zero, this simplifies to one, and I just want us to be careful of that. Fair? Okay, so on the left hand side of the equation, what's left? A what? What is it? Oh, cube root, right? That's a cube root of x minus 9. What happens on the right hand side? 8. So now my, my radical is isolated. Ooh, what do I do now? Oh, cube it. Well, how do you know that, that we have to cube it? So if it was a square root, we squared it. And if it's a cube root, we cube it? Genius. What if it's a fifth root? We raise it to the fifth. What's a, what if it's a 17th root? Raise it. Now, we we're not going to do any of those, so don't worry. Okay? I'm just seeing if you have the concept. We don't have 17th roots. I mean, you can. I just don't want to do any problems like that. Okay? So we raise both sides of the equation to the appropriate power. Okay? And we're going to know what the appropriate power is based on the, on the root, right? We're going to know what the appropriate power is based on the root. So now what? What's left on the left-hand side of this equation? Good. X minus 9. What's left on the right-hand side of this equation? You guys are so fast. How did you know that? Oh, you used your chart. Yay, good job. I mean, I know you didn't use your calculator because nobody picked it up when they came in like they were supposed to. Jerks. <laughs> what do I do? How do I solve this? Add 9 to both sides, right? X equals 521. Is that the right answer? Check it. 521 minus 9. 512. What's the cube root of 512? 8. What's 8 times 3? Oh, look. That's the right answer. So what's the third step that I didn't write down yet? It's just one word. Solve. What you said is the fourth step. What is that? Check. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? You okay with this so far? Okay. Does it get harder? Of course. It has to, right? I wouldn't be having any fun if it didn't get harder. Just teasing. Earlier I said, why is this one harder? And they said, because the root sign is on the right-hand side. And I was like this. Seriously. And then I sighed really loud. I was like this. <sighs> that doesn't matter to you, does it? Good. How do I get rid of the root sign? How do I undo this root? Square it. I square this side and I square this side. Everyone has gotten the right answer of the right-hand side. 
almost no one has gotten the right answer of the left side. So tell me what the right answer to the right side is. 7x plus 15. That's what I was afraid you would say. Okay? That's what people have said all day is x squared plus 1. Because you squared the x and you squared the 1, right? Why is that not the right answer? Can you tell me? Hold on, hold on. You have to multiply it by itself. If I multiply it by itself, doesn't it look like this? Didn't we practice that when we were multiplying binomials? What did we have to do here? Distribute x squared plus 1x plus 1x plus 1. Yep. x squared plus 2x plus 1. I will make this promise to you. If right here you write down x squared plus 1, you will get it wrong every time. I don't want you to get it wrong every time. I would actually like you to get it right every time. But you don't really have a chance unless you mess up somewhere else and like mistakenly get the right answer, right? We've got to remember to distribute this like this, okay? So now what? Now what kind of equation is it? That's a quadratic, isn't it? In order to solve quadratics, what do they have to be equal to? Zero. That's exactly right. So we need to move everything all to the same side. We need to combine our like terms, don't we? What do we have to do? Subtract 7x. And what else? Is it okay if I do these in the same step? I mean, it's okay with me. Is it okay with you? Okay. x squared minus 5x minus 14 equals 0. Oh my goodness. It's almost as if we spent last week learning about factoring just for this problem. It's like I had a plan. This one is even nice because it has a leading coefficient of 1, right? Did I just blow your mind? Yeah? Okay. It has a leading coefficient of 1, so we can do our shortcut, can't we? Yeah. Mul multiplies to be negative 14 and adds to be negative 5. Negative 7 and 2. So I can go straight to my factors, right? x minus 7, x plus 2. Now, some kids in earlier classes, I know it wasn't you for sure, but some kids in other earlier classes, I went straight here, x equals 7 and x equals negative 2, and they could not remember how I did that. So just as a very quick reminder, we take each factor and set it equal to 0, because if I have two numbers multiplying to be 0, one of them has to be 0. And I don't know which one it, it is, but I know both of them could be zeros. Right? So if I add 7 here, I get x equals 7. And if I subtract 2, I get x equals negative 2. Are they right? Are you positive? We, we, could, we could check, right? You even put it on our list of things that we should do, right? So we might as well do it. 7 plus 1. 7 times 7. 49 plus 15. 64, square root of 64, does 8 equal 8? Okay, that's correct. Negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. 7 times negative 2, negative 14 plus 15 is, is 1, right? What's the square root of 1? Wait. Does negative 1 equal 1? Did we do anything wrong? No, we did not. Tell me about this solution. Yeah, it's not 1. This does not work when we substitute it back in. It's not a solution. Wow, it's a good thing we checked. 
Don't get so much into the pattern that every time you get the right answer, that when you get an answer, you don't take the three seconds that you, it takes to check it. Okay? Is it okay to get two answers? Yeah. Both of these could have worked, right? But I want you to notice something. I want you to use what you know right now about square roots. Can you take the square root of a number and get an answer that's negative? No. So right now I put in negative 2, which is a possible answer. We might do a problem and get an answer that's negative. I'm not saying our answers won't be negative. Okay? What I'm saying is this. When I plug it in, I got negative 2 plus 1, which was negative 1. So on the left-hand side, I had a negative number. What can I put in here that will get me a negative number? Nothing. There's nothing I can put in here that will give me an answer that's a negative number. Does that make sense? Can we get negative answers for our solutions? Yes, we can. Okay, we can get negative answers for our solution. But in this particular problem, when I put this solution in, it gave me a negative answer on one side of the equal sign when all that's on the other side is a square root, a square root sign. Could I get that if it was a cubed root sign? Can you take the cube root of a number and get a negative? Absolutely. What's the cube root of negative 8? What times what, times what is negative 8? negative 2, right? That can happen, so we just have to be careful. I don't want to make this a rule that if we ever get a negative, it's wrong, because that's just absolutely not true. I want you to be able to think of the fact that if you put something in right here and get a negative on one side, and the only thing that's on the other side of the equal sign is a square root, that's probably not going to work. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to show you a couple more. We'll do one more, and I'm going to show you the beginning of another one, so we have an idea. Okay. What about this one? One half times the fourth root of x plus one equals eight. First thing we have to do is what? Isolate the radical. Is the radical isolated? If I cover it up, is that the only thing that's there? No, what do I have to do to get rid of the one half? Oh, okay, so a lot of people today have said divide by a half. Do we divide by fractions? No, what do we do instead that's a little easier? Multiply by its reciprocal, very good, okay? So if I multiply by its reciprocal, I multiply by two or two over one, right? On both sides. So on the left-hand side, use your correct vocabulary for me and tell me what happens right here. Very good, it simplifies to one. So on the left-hand side, I just have the fourth root of x plus 1. And on the right-hand side, I have 16. Now what? Raise it to the fourth power, right? Our rules say raise both sides of the equation to the appropriate power. If we're taking the fourth root, I raise it to the fourth power to get rid of that root, don't I? So what do I have left on the left-hand side? x plus 1. What's left on the right-hand side? That's not on our chart, is it? 65,536. No, I do not know that off the top of my head. I have it written down. <laughs> but surely you can solve this one. Oh, okay, subtract one from both sides. X equals 65,535. I have to be honest with you guys, a lot of you, if you got that as your answer, you would assume it's wrong. Because nobody gets 65,000 as an answer. But we might, right? Okay. Is it right? Okay, let's check. 65,535 plus 1. 65,536. What's the fourth root of that number? Ho hopefully it's 16, right? We could check using our calculator. In fact, let's go ahead and do that just so I can make sure to, rem to show you something. Let me turn my calculator on. Let's get a new document. No, I don't want to save that one. That is a calculator. And I'm going to press Control-Up-Arrow. OK? 
control up arrow right there and look what it asked me for I can put in the fourth root of 65,536 oh good it's 16 just like we wanted it to be right so 16 half of that oh it's the right answer you okay with that now the last one I have trouble making these up in my head so I'm just gonna make one up and then we're not gonna solve it because it probably most likely will not work as a nice pretty number okay but it's something I want you to see at least the beginning part of okay so if we have the square root of excuse me the fourth root of 3x plus 1 equals 2x how do we undo a fourth root we raise it to the fourth power we did that right we did that right here so that's not anything new but I raise this side to the fourth power what do I have left on the left hand side 3x plus 1 what do I have on the right side that's what I was afraid you would say what am I raising to the fourth power all of it right let me see that foldable remember when we talked about our foldable and I, we talked about power of powers you remember this and I even gave you an example oops excuse me on power of powers I even gave you an example right here if there was a number inside we've got to remember to raise that number to that power also we can't forget that okay so if we have this one right here what do I end up with that's right 16 X to the fourth okay that's as far as I'm gonna go right now because I just wanted to talk about this specifically okay if you raise both sides to the fourth which is what you need to do to undo this fourth root make sure on the other side you raise everything to the fourth power not just that variable okay do you have any questions about this you good okay I'd like to give you the rest of the period to work on it can you do that alright go ahead and get started